Hey Cinderella's, welcome back to my channel and today we are here with our beautiful model Safna. Say hello Safna. Hi. So we are going to be, we have an in-house training so what you don't see in front of the camera is we have other artists from Cinderella Brides here for an in-house training and we're going to film this so not only can they have it as a takeaway but you out there can watch it too. So today we're going to be um, doing a nice soft glam look for Safna. We're going to do a kind of like one of my signature bridal looks and so I'm really excited to have her dolled up. She's one of my neighbors, so she took time out of her busy schedule with her two daughters to come so out here and here. hang with all of us. So um, we're gonna like bring up, you know, we we're gonna hear questions from my staff behind the scenes, and I'm gonna stop and answer them. So it is gonna be a little bit of a longer training, but I'm really happy that you guys are here watching. Stick with us so you can learn the Cinderella Bride signature style. Okay, cool. So what size your skin? I have my moisturizer. Okay. and um, uh, the vitamin C serum. Okay, awesome. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and let me just, I'm gonna feel your face. Let me just sure. um, sanitize my hands really quickly. Let's see, Do your, is your skin more normal to oily? Or sensitive. is it sensitive? Like it's a combination actually. Combination? Yeah. Do you tend to get like oily in the T-zone or? T. Okay, yeah. so yeah, I can see, and something that has larger pores, so you can kind of see she probably produces a little bit more oil. Um, but I find that my oilier skin clients that have larger pores, sometimes the products they're using, maybe it's drying out their skin, so they tend to lean, especially during the winter months, a little bit drier. Yes, Am I correct? correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit more hydration, a little bit more moisturizer. I'm gonna give you a little lip balm. Um, and smack your lips for me. Okay, so I have some moisturizer on my palette. I'm gonna go ahead and just give her a little bit more hydration. We are also gonna use a primer, like a pore fill, filling primer, which I absolutely love. I'm gonna show you guys. Um, that, does that feel a little bit, mm -hmm. bit more hydrated? Did you feel dry? Like the, I did, yeah? I feel like the moisturizer I used in the daytime is mm -hmm. not, doesn't do its job in the winter. So here's the important thing when you're working with um, this type of skin type, you want to make sure, even though they say they moisturize, you want to check. Because if you don't check and you start applying foundation on this, your base is going to be really important for really creating a um, like really smooth application. Um, and that's something that doesn't look heavy. Because when the skin is really dry, it's going to look heavy. So you want to remember that. Anjali, I'm not even in the camera. I know. But I have to be in the camera. I mean, when I'm no, talking, I mean, you have to move it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. to redo that part. The skin has one important thing. Yes. Uh -huh. Just say that. So one of the biggest things is when you're applying product onto any client's face, you want to make sure their skin is properly prepped. And especially like we have Sepna, she has a little bit more of a drier skin because of the winter, but she also is more of a normal to combination skin. So she probably tends to lean on the side of using a less um, emollient or a less heavy moisturizer. But sometimes, when you put on a drier skin, a more, like your foundation, it's gonna tend to look cakey or flaky or too heavy. So the key is to really have a very good skin prep prior to you actually applying foundation in the face. So I just moisturized her skin, and now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, and I'm using the um, e.l.f. Um, Poreless Putty Primer. You can see this is from Tatcha. I mean, not Tatcha, it's the Tatcha Dupe. It's from e.l.f. This works literally the same but it's going to cost you a fraction of the price i was just speaking awesome. about the tatcha primer yeah and how good that is yeah i want to know what you mean well there you have it up on my so that's what i would recommend revolution has the same one it's amazing mm -hmm. yeah. well, we have a question mm -hmm. does your skin prep um differ from skin type to skin type or do yes. you use the same thing mm -hmm. okay and you see i'm just targeting the pores and areas where i really want to just fill in because I'm using a smaller, denser brush for this. But yes, the skin prep does differ from client to client. It really just depends on their skin type. For me, if you take for me as an example, I have a drier skin tone, um, but I have smaller pores from the face that you're just looking. And so we're not gonna, like I already use a lot of moisturizer on my face, but if you have something that's truly oily, like has a lot of shine and oil, looks true for me. And they're maybe not dry, um, they won't use as much. 
I use serum in this almost like a little bit. You, a lighter serum? Yeah. Somebody that's even drier, like if you have somebody that's more mature skin, because sometimes I know we deal with like um, moms, brides, and aunts, and all that. Like you can keep like an oil in your kit. I have a really tiny one, a NYX oil, mm -hmm. and it actually works really good. Um, because those are the people that tend to be like, oh my God, you're putting too much makeup on me. It's too much makeup. And like, literally, like you need to have like, different products in your kit for your skin prep based on what you're doing with. So now she looks a little bit shiny right now, but her face is completely moisturized and the pores are filled in. So this is gonna give me a good base to start working on. Um, did you put eye cream on today? I did. Okay, perfect. So she has her eye cream on. If I feel like the eyes are underneath, the eyes are dry also, you can go in and put a little bit more eye cream too. That's all gonna help you because that will help with your um, under eye like concealer not looking as heavy, right? Okay. What? I'm sorry, what moisturizer did you put on there? I just use the Artistry moisturizer. Um, it's like a, I can show it to you later, okay. but it's, I have like, it's depotted in a really small container. But it's like my, like it's a day cream, mm -hmm. so it's not super super heavy, but it's like a good amount where it's gonna like not, it's gonna give her the hydration she needs. I like using these also as it's a hand palette. Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely love these. You have these too. Yeah. I literally got a roll off of Amazon and you just cut it. It's like medical tape. Yeah. But it, then you don't like each between each application. You don't have to have. Like, you know, yeah, it's very convenient. Your hands are not dirty like mm -hmm. that. So, um, hey, Shika, can you please grab that door? Okay. So, the first thing we're gonna do, and I always like to start with the eyes when I'm working on a client. And the reason why I find, like, if I do fallout, it just, the, the, it's just easier to clean up afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead, I love the NARS um, primer. It's the eye primer, it's the clear one. So you can literally um, use it, this underneath any color to build whatever type of application of makeup you want, whether it's a really ni nice light natural eye. You can even use this for a darker eye makeup look. If you wanna go really heavy and dark, you can maybe use like a darker base, like an eyeliner and smudge it out to a cream eyeliner. But we're gonna go ahead and um, use some of the primer. And I'm gonna put it all over her face. I'm just gonna use her, all over her eyes, not her face. <laughs> Close your eyes for me. And I'm gonna turn slightly. Perfect. So you're gonna apply the primer all across the top, like the bottom portion of the lip, all the way to the brow bone. All the way across and out. I'm gonna have you continually turn from side to side. Mm -hmm because it's easier for filming, okay? No problem. Perfect. So now her, our eyelids are completely prepped. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you like a couple of the different brushes that I work with um, while I'm doing my application. So, so, Going back, so we're gonna use an angled brush for the brows. I like to use different blending brushes. Blending is your best friend. The thing that I don't wanna see when you're applying makeup is lines. Lines, lines all over the face do not look good. You wanna blend, so these are all different types of blending brushes, and we're gonna use these to, to um, color in like the crease of her eye to just add some dimension. You can see if you look at her eyes, what kind of eyes does she have? She, has a, she does have an almond eye, but what is the shape of this? Is this deep set? Is it prominent? Like she what is her? A little bit of a hood. She has a little bit of a hood, yes. You know mm -hmm. how you can tell? Because if I, you can keep it open. Um, if I lift this here, she has a little bit, like a little Zoom bit. In. But the thing is, it's, it's very slight because you can still see no, no. the cream on her eye, right? But see, she has very deep set eyes. So here, you don't want to put a really dark color into the crease of the eyes because we don't want her eyes to look sunken in, right? Even more. So this is where you would use a lighter color to draw her shape, maybe bring it above the eyes because there is a slight hood, and then just all across it. Like, you don't want to use a dark color. This is where you don't. If they say, I want a smoky eye, absolutely, you can do it, but the smoke would be on the lid, not all the way up. Sometimes with people that have like uh, more of a flat around, like an Asian eye or something, you can go really high with the shadow. Here, you wouldn't do that, okay? So first things first, and some artists, I know they like to conceal their brow. She, 
she actually does need a little bit concealer um, on her brow area only because I don't think she she got her brows done, <laughs> which is fine. So I'm just gonna take a little know. bit of concealer, and that's like a trick I like to use is just kind of maybe conceal a little bit of the brow bone, brow, um, that hair with a little bit of um, eye concealer, okay? And I do that afterwards. I know some people like to use concealer as their eye primer. I don't recommend that. I think you need an eye primer. That's why they make the, the eye primer. It stays, it doesn't move. If you use a concealer and that's all you have, then you need to make sure you set it completely with like some type of like a base or foundation or trans translucent powder and then go over it with eyeshadow. Because if you don't do that and you don't do that wash, your product is gonna move. But with an eye primer, the product doesn't move. Um, so you can go straight in even with the eyeshadow. I'm gonna try that again. And you can use your fingers to blend. Extra. And I'm still gonna go over this with some shadow. How many of you guys own the Morphe palette? The, not Morphe, the, um, what is this one called? The Jeffree Jeff Star Zara. palette? How many of you guys have this palette? Me. Just you and Sharon? This palette is incredible. It has basically every color that you would need to do somebody's face. You can do so many versatile looks with this. And it's, when it's on sale, it's incredibly inexpensive. So I suggest you all get one of these palettes. Yes, Jeffrey it's Jeffree Star. 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 Wait, Jeffrey. It's Jeffrey the Orgy Star? palette. I can't thank you enough, Sharon, for introducing this palette to me because this palette, like, you'll see, uh, but I use this for every makeup application. What's the name again, the full name? It's the Orgy palette. Orgy by mm -hmm. Jeffree, Jeffree Star. Star. Jeffrey Star. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use like a lighter eyeshadow on her um, for the, her brow bone. You can see it here. But it's top. Thank you. Okay, so I see like because I took a little bit of time, her uh, primer crease, so I'm just going to go ahead and blend that primer out again. Mm -hmm. Everybody buy it. No, no, go to jeffreestar.com. Oh, okay. Like literally I picked it up for like 12 bucks not too long ago. I know, twelve dollars. Sharon's like, what? I think we paid fifty dollars, right? I think it's like six. See? Is it too? Why is it so low? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's because it's going it's by, bro. It's, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> because nobody likes it. Okay. Okay. So here's my blending brush, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and hold that for me, sure, really quickly. Let me see if you can, does it go up a little higher? Actually, you know what? It's okay. It's gonna cover here. Okay, good. Like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're gonna use a nice, like, mauvey, light brown. And you can see we're doing like a windshield wiper motion. I'm bringing the color out a little bit. And look straight for me. Same thing here. You can already see like the color, like the dimension in her eyes. And I'm bringing the color up a little higher. Have you ever done a smoky eye before? I have. You like smoky eye? I do. Mm-hmm. What about my own? I mean, like, am I own it? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not even done with touch. Mm-hmm. And then you can just go back and forth and you can build the amount of color you want. You can also, look straight for me, you can have them open. Open your eyes. And then you can really see, because part of makeup artistry is symmetry. You want to make sure that your makeup is looking even and so um, like you want to step away a little bit from them and you want to kind of take a closer look to see how it's looking right and What do you guys think? Should we give her a smoky eye instead of a natural look today? Where are you going tonight? Do your signature brush. I know that's not that's not the smoky eye, but it's smoky eye. Wow. The brush. There's something oh, here. Shit. 
Huh? You're I know. Her. I'm tempting her. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna stick to the signature bridal look because everybody wants that. I'm like, oh, we should do a smokey eye. <laughs> She's still gonna look pretty. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she absolutely is. So she has. So my signature bridal look that I do for a lot of our brides. A lot of our brides. Um, there's two different. Um, there's two different looks that everybody asks for. One is a very matte type of like, um, very Bollywood type of eye that you see in a lot of the, the langas, the bright, you know, the ones that are just very smudgy, no shimmer. And then there's the other look, which has a lot of shimmer and it has the gold and it has the bronzes and the bronzy tones. So those are the two different techniques. I can do one on each side for you guys, or do you want me to just do one? Like, do you want to learn one of them? One. One? Okay, which one would you like, shimmer or matte? Let's do shimmer. Shimmer? It's the most popular. <laughs> Everybody wants the shimmer. And so you can go out. So <laughs> She'll bling. I also, <laughs> and for you makeup artists that are uh, watching this, I also feel like you can direct your client a little bit in what's going to look the best on them. So you can look at them and say, you know, they, uh, people always come with a pre like style of what they want, what they like. Like, oh, I, I want to look like this. But you can say, well, this is something that's trending. Like, if you want to do more smoky eyes, like, then you can say like this is what's trending. Let me try this on you. You know, something that I've done this year is um, I've done a lot of matte eyes that are like light to dark, almost like a vertical smoky eye, but you know with just matte colors, and it's looked gorgeous. Actually, I like. I wanna, you, can you do the matte first and then add the shimmer? Um, yes and no. The reason I say that is because if I put matte shadow underneath and I put shimmer on top, it won't be a shimmer. Yeah, and and sometimes shimmer. people want to see a lot of shimmer. Okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go in with a really nice, um, this is like a pale gold color. It's really, a, it's a highlighter, okay? okay? It's the Ofra Rodeo Drive highlighter. Um, but I love the way this appears, it come, shows up on brown skin. You can see that because I use so much of it. Um, so I'm gonna take, I just took some product on my small brush and I'm gonna turn it slightly. Perfect. So now look at the thing is, the technique here is I'm pulling the eyes top and hold your face tight, perfect. See, I'm creating a really flat canvas to apply the shadow. And this is something, I'm taking my time today, but you guys can do the same thing that I'm doing, like and skipping some steps for bridal party, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and place and pull. You see that? I'm gonna do it on the other side so you can see too. Okay, go straight. So there it is. See, a lot of the times, most people are like, pat, 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 right? You don't wanna do that for shimmer colors. You wanna first pull the skin top, give yourself a nice flat canvas, and now you're placing and you're basically pulling it down, you're pushing it into the skin. A little bit more. Okay, that's the difference. You see that, the color? Nice, it's a good color payoff because you're not just placing, you're actually like kind of placing the product and pulling down because it's this is product it is, that's what you how you work it. Now the one thing it's my pet peeve and I don't like it, so I'm gonna actually show you with a brush first, and I'm gonna show you with like a little bit of a smaller brush. It can look straight actually. You see, in I don't want shimmer up in here. Like in the up here, I don't want shimmer, I don't want shimmer. When she opens her eyes. Her shimmer shouldn't be all the way like into here or here. It starts to look messy. It needs to be on the lid, okay? It just, like, a, I think just from a symmetry perspective, if you have too much shimmer, it's like, where do you look? Do you look in the inner corner of the eye? Do you look in the outer? You can bring shimmer here down into the inner corner of the eye. You can bring shimmer here, but you don't want to bring it all the way into the, like, this nose area. Make sense? So, and what I'm gonna do, just to make sure I didn't do that, like, even if you did that, the way that you go, you take your crease color that we used earlier, the one that's almost finished, you can see that one. Um, you take your little blending brush and I use a smaller brush for this one. And now I'm gonna have you open. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna basically make sure that I like soften that up if I did get it there. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a slightly darker color. This is the Tarte palette, the In Bloom palette, which has like the best colors I for creating a really natural look. And a lot of people use this palette, which is awesome. But I'm gonna use like this, I'm gonna use a slightly darker color. It has some um, bronze tones in it. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and, again, liberally, I'm using the same brush too. You don't need to have so many brushes all the time. What's mm -hmm. the difference between the Tarte palette and the Orange Juice palette? These are all mattes. Okay, I didn't see And this has a lot of mattes. shimmer in it, but they ha okay. this has mattes too. Okay. But it has, I see now. See, these are, these are, this is uh, pink pink, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is more rose. This is, and she's, these are neutrals. yep, this has okay. a lot of, this has pinks, you can see that at the bottom, They're there's warmer. a lot of pinks in here. Um, there are some golden tones, but it, this has more pink shades. This Tarte palette, really quickly since we're talking about palettes, this has a lot of like brown and peachy tones. Mm -hmm. Bronze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brown, like browns, peachy tones, bronze tones, you can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so same thing. So you can go over it like maybe like one more time. But do you start to see like the dimension that's happening there? Mm-hmm. Right? Straight. Okay. Now I'm just gonna take my smaller blending brush, and this is where you wanna basically take maybe like a slightly darker color. You're not making this eye a smoky eye. So this is um, leader. This is, at least some of them have leaders, it's easy to see. But now you're gonna just basically place some color, darker, it's a matte shade. I like to use mattes for the crease, the corner, the angle, you could have be. Use a matte, don't use a shimmer there, because you're now you're starting to finish off the makeup, right? You're closing it in. So I'm just gonna show you the difference between one eye and the other, and I'm just doing this right here. I'm gonna add a little bit of a crease here, like a V look here. So it's right in the corner, open for me, and it looks straight. Okay, which eye looks like it's popping more? This one, just right? And I put a little, only a teeny bit of product. Okay, same thing again. I'm gonna take just a teeny bit of product, tap, tap it off, tap my brush. You don't need much. Same thing. you want to go back in with a, like your gold the primary color that we first used just to kind of touch it up that's a lot often I do do that I do layer close me because sometimes when you put the color one color two it starts to not look as bright or poppy as you want and so go back in with a little bit and I will tell you one of the pro tips if you are um, a lot of the times just like working right in front of the client and you're not stepping back, like literally stepping back to see what they look like, you're not gonna be able to tell. Like if there's a mistake, if it's symmetry, so you wanna step back close for me. And I'm just taking my blending brush again, and wherever I see a line, I'm just like very, like with the side of the brush, I'm just like tapping open. So that's it, that, there's my eyeshadow. If I wanna go even darker with this, I could, I can know. And so for her, I like the, this look that I would give her. If you look at her eyes, the symmetry, the shape of her eyes, at the end of her eyes, they go down a little bit, right? So our goal is to lift them up, right? Look um, look in the camera, sure, there you go. So, I, <laughs> okay, <that's okay. laughs> um, so our goal is to take this eye, you see how this crease, this hood goes a little bit down? We're gonna draw the liner, like we're gonna draw the liner like from a little bit of a higher angle, so we lift the eye up a little bit, okay? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, and I have to, again, I love that I have people that uh, are in my team that work in retail because you guys know all the best products. And I am absolutely loving these eyeliners right now. Um, thanks to Sharon, she had told me about them previously. This is um, Danessa Myrick's um, Color FX. These matte eyeliners are absolutely Aren't they, they shadows too? You could use it for I, anything. I, I yeah. space. Yes, you can use this for anything. Yeah. This, product is phenomenal. So I would like, I'm going to show you, so very super, super clean eyeliner right now is not in. I like it 
I like it on certain looks and because we do like clients who will, will do their makeup one way in the morning and we'll do it different in the evening time and we'll do it different for another event. Um, it's okay that we use a clean eyeliner sometimes and we use a smudgy, but know how to do all the versatile eyeliners because it's really gonna help you to create different looks. But when you're doing like bridal party and you're like 40 minute application, give them a smudgy eyeliner. You can do, if you look right now, my eyeliner is not eyeliner, it's eyeshadow. You can create eyeliner with eyeshadow, you can create eyeliner with liner, you can create eyeliner with a pencil. Like there's all different ways. There's not one rule. And that's why like Marnie, you were saying earlier, like I wanna learn how to do the right way to do this and the right way to do that. There's no rules in makeup. There's no rules. You have to figure out what's gonna work for that face. What's gonna work on Farida is not gonna work on Diana. Make sense? So um, we're gonna use this, this can create a really clean look clean clean eyeliner and it also can create a nice smudgy eyeliner and for bridal looks like for morning wedding bridal looks i like a soft eyeliner it's a very natural look it's a daytime wedding usually um and so you don't want something super super heavy the other thing is with these products you can mix them so if you feel like this eyeliner is too black you can mix it like you can mix it and make like a dark brown with this because it's a little bit more of a chocolate brown um so this is the color is chocolate so you can mix that and that and make a dark brown because they don't sell a dark brown of the bonnet okay all right so i have my eyeshadow it's right here on my hand palette and i mean my eyeliner and then i'm basically the thing is when why people are messing up with eyeliner it's two things your hat you don't have the proper eyeliner and or you don't have the proper brush or your hand is not steady and you're not practicing enough. So if you're a makeup artist and you're watching this tutorial, one of the things I can't stress is your skills and your expertise is not gonna come from when you have a client sit in your chair and start you start working on them and then the next client, and that's your practice. Every All of this comes from outside of what you do outside, what you do in between your clients. You're practicing, even for yourself. If you wanna get good with eyeliner, start wearing eyeliner. Start putting it on yourself so your hands get better, your hands get steadier. If you don't do that, or if you don't do different eyeliner even on yourself or on somebody else while you're not working, you're not gonna get better. Your, your practice can be when you have somebody sitting in your chair. That's the bottom line. So, so now I'm gonna, see how this her lid goes right here? I don't want that. I'm gonna actually go a little bit above. I'm gonna go right here. And I like to have them sometimes hold their eyes open so I know. And so for her, I'm not gonna go all the way up. I just want a very slight wing, close for me now. And now I'm gonna start bringing it right here. What questions do you guys have for me? You do a full line. It could be thinner at the inner edge, but I do go all the way across. Unless I'm doing something more artistic, where it's only an eyeliner at the right. end. But for a, like a, a soft glam application, like a daily, like you want, you had somebody with really small eyes, you wouldn't. Oh, I had somebody with really small eyes yesterday. And you put a double liner on it where you as well? Yep. Okay. Very, very thin in the inside. Okay. Almost like a tight line, right? Mm -hmm. oh. I did tight line here too, actually. Oh, cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's her eyeliner. Which one? I mean, I like to go over this product a little bit. This is buildable. Um, so I find if you do like one application, it's nice, it is a matte black, but if you wanna make it darker, you can go back in. Open. So now what you can quickly do while it's still wet is you can take like one of your smudger brushes and well, you know what I could use this. This is just an angled brush. And if you just go over the eyeliner while it's still a little bit wet, you can immediately see it's already softening up. Do you see that? It's already smudged, right? And then you can go back in with whatever you still have left and you can make the right where the lash line is a little bit darker. The goal is not for your clients to all look the same, close for me. You wanna create like the look, a different look for depending on their face, right? What's gonna look good on them? And then I also like going in I'm going to just go in with like a really dark brown, just a dark brown shadow. I'm using something like right at the bottom, right here, that one. And Looking 
so pretty already. Just a, a soft smoke right on the other. Okay, same, we can do this. We're gonna do, on the other side, do you wanna see a very clean line and just like the difference? And then I can smudge it out. Okay, same thing. Do you ever open them? If you ever feel like you do, like go too thick, that smudge technique works all the time. You can fix it. Open. The other thing I do looks straight for me. When it's when you have a difficult time, if you have a small eye getting into the inner corner of the eye, you want to have them look down and that way. So now you have space for you to apply the liner into that inner corner. Okay. okay, now it looks straight for me. Okay, so what is the biggest difference you see with the eyes and what looks a little bit more like natural versus very harsh? Right? And a lot of times what do we all what are, what is the application everybody basically does all the time? This right so this is it yes it's nice but for this type of look where we're, we have a lot of color going on in the eye it starts to clash and it also really depends on the eye right what's going to work good when you i'm asking you as a your own like what your own preference is when you like do makeup right do you like a very clean eyeliner or do you like something a little bit softer, I like softer. Mm -hmm. most people like a softer look so it's a little bit easier to do is but it's again you have to practice at it because it's you draw the line and then you start smudging so now this one is a little bit dry and set so i'm going to show you and actually i want to like since i have some product closer i want to make this lash one a little bit darker here okay so this is the lash right here if you have something like this it's going to be easier if they want more to add more on this but if you start here, like, then it's gonna be like, okay, let me make it thinner, let me, and you can make it thinner. I'm gonna show you easily how you can make it thinner. All right, let me just find my love taking all the makeup off. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna show you another product. This is like, I'm like literally hitting pan with this product. This is um, a dark brown gel eyeliner. This has saved me so many times. I, it's Sigma, but they don't even make it anymore. I need to find somebody else that makes it, so. It's, this is like incredible. I'm gonna actually go to the other side and I'm gonna show you. Okay, so you see, gonna, all right. I have it on my angle brush. I'm gonna go right just at the edge. Now. Look straight. Okay, what happened to that island? Toned it down. Mm -hmm. It totally like softened the island. All I did was go at the edge of where I finished the liner and went right at the top, slightly. And it totally softened the island. Now, would you be okay walking out with something like that? Can you tell the difference from before yes, and after? It's less dark. Yeah, yeah, it's a little less dramatic, right? Now, here's another way. You can still, still soften it up. You can take the black eyeshadow now, maybe black and dip it with dark brown. And perfect. Should we do like a soft gray? You can, but this is already over. Turning that kind of grayish now looks straight. Okay, so and I'm now that this is a little bit darker but soft, I like this darker side, right? So there's always different ways to like do eyeliner and I can't stress enough like you want to be you want to play with your eyeliner technique I remember for a long time I only did the clean eyeliner 
because that's like what you like learn initially. And I, I love it on me, but when I have it with like barely any color or shadow, it looks nice because then the focus of the makeup is the eyeliner, right? So, questions about the eyeliner? Anybody else or product questions or like anything you, you've struggled with? Um, do you prefer to use something like this, like a gel liner over versus like an eyeliner marker or pencil? I'm not against using a eyeliner marker or pencil. Depending on what the product, product is, some of it doesn't move. Like if I get a real liquid eyeliner mm -hmm. and you, I put that on there, I won't be able to soften it up. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like the, so you just have to like see what it is that you're using. Because yeah. I find this product is the most versatile. Mm -hmm. Because the gel, you can do anything with it. Yeah. So this is gel and this I find is more, I don't consider this gel, I consider this more of a liquid. Mm -hmm. But this liquid moves. Mm -hmm. I have another liquid that if you, you know the one with the thin brush? Mm -hmm. It doesn't move. Mm -hmm. So then you can't really play with it or manipulate it the way you want. So it's easy if you're gonna, you don't need so many products in your kit. If you have like a couple of these, like it's, you're gonna have to do anything with this. If you have this only and an eyeliner pencil, you're good. Yeah. And you know what happens most of the time with your gel pots? I absolutely, this I've been using the longest. And I love this product, but what happens with this product? This is, everybody knows what this is, right? Inglot 77? Yes, yeah, smudges. Okay. Inglot 77? Right. It dries up. Oh, sorry. Once it dries up, it doesn't, and it, then it doesn't move. It creates a huge mess, right? Mm -hmm. This is, I pan with them all the time, and I still have it in my kit because I like that it's so dark. But since I started using this, mm -hmm. I can do what this does, I can do this and better. Mm -hmm. Do you find the ink lot smudges though? Like throughout the day, like it. it Where? No. No. No, mm -hmm. so, but I've heard mm -hmm. a lot of people mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. yeah. Underneath, if they're putting it in the waterline. I have the glass. Yeah. Line. If they're putting it in the waterline, yes. Okay, so for her, um, I'm gonna give you guys this. I'm gonna pose this question. Eyeliner or no eyeliner in the waterline? Day or night? Mm -hmm. You could. What's good in her eyes? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do one in one. I want you to see the difference, okay? Daytime, sometimes I don't put in the waterline. For her, I feel like she needs it. But I'm gonna show you the difference. Why. Do you always wear eyeliner in the waterline or no? You mean on the bottom? Inside. Uh, not always, but I, I, with the mascara, I make it dark, so mm -hmm. it looks like a liner. Mm -hmm. I do like it. Yeah. So um, we're gonna, yes, it's gonna pop her eye. Um, so we'll do one in one. Because her eyes are smaller on the end. Mm -hmm. But once her lashes are on, it's not gonna matter. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which eye pops more? Looks bigger. Looks bigger. Right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I don't want you to think day or night. If you're working with a client and if they're wearing Indian clothes, primarily all our clients are wearing Indian clothes, let's face it, right? Don't think oh, it's morning, it's night. Think what's gonna look good on the eye. What's gonna make their eyes pop more, what it's gonna look, you know? Mm -hmm. And so once her lashes go on, I feel like even the daytime she can carry this off. Okay? So we're done with the eyes for now. I like to do the lashes also last, and the reason why is because when you bake, when I'm doing a bride, if you bake and do all this stuff, it's gonna, it gets all over the lashes and it creates more work, so you don't want that, okay? So now I'm just gonna clean up underneath your eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one. See why I love this hand palette? That's <laughs> great. Look at me. You did her waterline. Mm-hmm. You can see if like you need to add a little bit of eye cream, you can add eye cream at this point. Um, not all the time do you have time to do all of this, um, but if they are dry, then it's gonna make your job at the end a lot easier. Okay. 
color corrector. I have two that I really like. Um, this one is a little bit more sheer. Um, this is the NARS Medium Deep. And then I have this one, which is the LA Girl Pro Conceal. And I always, I, I primarily use this a lot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Pro Conceal on her because I want a full coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit in my palette. Even if you put a lot down, doesn't mean you have to use it all, okay? Because a lot of the times, if you're putting if you're putting too much orange underneath the eyes, you're gonna run into a problem. You need to get that? No. You're good? Okay. Diana, you saw me literally put the, do my makeup like, when you got here. <laughs> so now the other thing is, if you it looks short for me, is there any other areas of her face that you guys think we should color color? Um, no, no. Uh, no. A little uh, mouth. I only yeah. think around the chin yeah. area, down yeah. here, yeah. maybe slightly. We can do a little bit. Just be careful not to do too much. Um, You've been doing it where you see like a little blue? Or a little I'm doing it where I see a little bit of darker color that's coming around the chin area. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I absolutely love these brushes. What is that? This is Morphe. I got addicted to them. Brushes. I love Morphe brushes. Oh, my God. This is a are those the new one? one? Yeah. yeah. Really good. Which one is it? That's the B102. Mm -hmm. She knows what's that? Brush names. There's a yeah, smell for that. Do you love the one? Yeah. Cool. You still do? Nope. All the stores are closed. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Why? Um, Long story short, they're like trying to cut costs within the company, so they close all the stores. Wow. Yeah, so I don't work there anymore. Okay, next thing is concealer. This conceal, this product actually is really good. I used to use Tarte Shape Tape all the time, and I know everybody swears by Tarte Shape Tape, which I did for a long time until I found this product. This works amazing because it gives you as much coverage as Tarte Shape Tape but it also is a much creamier product, so you're getting less of that drier application. Tarte Shape Tape, if you have gorgeous young skin with no lines and so hydrated, it's perfect for you, but so this dry. will work for everybody, right? That was such I, a don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. What? That's a commercial right there. I don't. You'd be like too faced if you're watching this clip. Please sponsor me and send me some of your products. You need to know which ones to start off with. Those two, but single color. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's my palette. There's my the nice concealer. Okay. Four or five One of the things, up. guys. Yeah, guys, yeah. guys. 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 Um. Well, one of the things that I um, absolutely always work with is a sponge. And I know everybody is like, oh, I like using a brush. You can use a brush too. I find the sponge, what it does is it takes any of the excess product that you don't really need on the face and it takes it off for you. Kind of like helps you along the way. So this is a brush. If I can't get into the inner corners of the eye, I like to use that. But this, there's my brush and there's my sponge. I'm gonna show you, and I'm using the same brush that I use to apply the color correcting. Gina, Isa. And I know there's this, put it one here and one there, just because you want. Like, seriously, like, I know there's all like different concealer hacks and this and that, you don't need to do all of that. Just get the job done and put enough on that they're gonna get covered. And you see what I'm doing? The technique here is you're pressing and you're not really moving a lot anywhere else. You're pressing and placing, you're pushing it into the skin. When you're pushing it into the skin, it's gonna give the most natural. Now up here, you can create an illusion of a lifted eye by taking that concealer and pushing it up. Pushing it up that way, you see that? And now you see in here, I'm like, okay, I wanna go in there, but I don't want it to go everywhere. 
This is where I like to bring in my brush. And these, this brush is good because it's a very dense brush. So what it does, it does the same thing as that sponge. Is that more clear? Mm -hmm. It's the vegan series. I love it. So good. See? Immediately look. Her, her face looks, this eye looks already immediately looked at. Right? And don't worry if it looks a slightly lighter shade. I like that. I want it to be slightly lighter because once her foundations and everything go on, it's gonna all like come together. Same thing, pressing. And I like, I know everybody's like, oh, I'll just wash my beauty blender. Fine, you can do that. That's a lot more money. These little sponges, use it once and throw it out. That's the best because it keeps it the most sanitary. To me, I find it just a lot easier. And I'm using the other side of the sponge because that, you can pick up whatever product her skin doesn't need. Okay, and I'm gonna take our brush here, same thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is her foundation. Now that her under eyes are done, I'm going to go ahead and grab it. And I kind of already, I can like look at her and tell what her foundation is. You'll get to the point. What I encourage you guys is if you're, um, if you're a makeup artist and you're watching this, don't like pick so many different lines of foundation to have in your kit. Really just try to pick like one line and become comfortable with that line. So you can look at a client and be like, okay, you're this shade or you're that shade because when you have too many different and pick up on like I, I'm using the NARS um, the, the NARS 24-7 um, long wear the long wear foundation I find it works tends to work for all skin types um, if you have oily skin if you have dry skin it works for all skin types so that's what we're going to use on her we're going to use the NARS uh, formula and I have depotted them Angela you'll need to move the camera back when I'm talking well, I mean, it's fine, but I've depotted them so that um, it's easier for me to carry around in my pro kit. And I'm gonna like, just take a wild guess and say she's Barcelona, okay? <laughs> and let's see, all right, and then I turn that way. And the way a lot of people ask, how do you color match? How do you color match somebody? How do you know what foundation, skin tone they are? If you're not sure and you wanna color match them. So now, she is a good kid. I mean, for her, she has some redness in her skin. Um, but she doesn't have, sometimes you have clients where their face is like really um, light and then the neck is dark, right? And so what do you do? Do you make their face light and then bring it down to their neck or do you match their neck? One thing you do is you can ask them. The other, what I like to do is I like to match the face and then contour with a cream and blend everything because then seamlessly the center areas of their face are going to be their natural light shade and then around the jawline there's not going to be a stark difference anymore of like if they're light if they're dark it's going to all blend together and they're going to look very sculpted okay she's not that case but um just you know that's like my little tip there so does that look like it matches her spot on right you know why i know because i do exactly what i'm telling you to do pick a line know that line be an expert with the, those shades and how they work you know know the undertones and things like that because if you pick you know brand a brand b brand c you're not going to ever get comfortable with what exactly they you know how it's going to perform on whoever you're working on but here you can use these shades and like you're like okay this works for everybody you know you just have to know their skin skin color or whatever look straight through and now look straight oh and now is that okay <laughs> And so, and if you feel like even a little, she's a little bit lighter, remember, we're going to be able to fix this all while we do the rest of her um, cut, contouring and everything. I think this shade is actually really nice for her. And the other thing I'm going to do, I don't use a lot of foundation. I use very little bit of foundation. I only use what I need. You saw I took a little small drop before, so now I'm going to take another drop. And really, that's it. Um, and I still blend, you know, you, you saw me just place it 
So I'm passing this onto the skin. And there's any of these like brushes, they're really good for like stippling. Here's a, another really good one. This one, this one, okay. This is like a, this is probably a Morphe brush too, I think. Somewhere along the way. I look like a Sigma brush. This, or, this is nice because it really, like you can take this and I'll show you, and you can press that into the skin. And when you press that into the skin, it just starts to like disappear. The makeup look doesn't look like makeup. It starts to look like skin. Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't even have much makeup on her other side. Her, this but then her redness shows through a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh. This is not done, that's why. <laughs> And you know, um, sometimes, have you ever done a, a client and you're like, oh, there's too much makeup on their forehead? Don't put so much. There's not like that rule that you have to put so much foundation everywhere. Take whatever's left on your brush, even if you don't apply and just, you can do the rest of the forehead with that because the forehead tends to like, not need as much foundation. Like you need it in the, the center, but, and then you can just like push it to the um, hairline and really make it look straight for me. You see? Does she need more foundation in her forehead? No, I barely put anything up there, right? And, that. and then you want to remember to blend down into the jawline. I do see that her forehead's a little warmer than mm -hmm. most of it is. So. Yep. Okay. So that's why you don't want to really put like you don't want to color correct. That leave it warm. It's okay because we're gonna sculpt you the face. You don't see like a difference between. Yeah. When you yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you contour, you're gonna sure. be fine. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're putting the warmth back yeah. in. I guess. Sure. What do you think? You think it match? Mm -hmm. Looks good? Okay. Yeah, really good. <laughs> Which is great, like, you know. Because there's not much on your face. Because mm -hmm. less is more, guys. Wow. Less is more. Remember that. Okay? All right. Now, let's go ahead and to cream contours. Um, I, I keep this in my kit. It, it always works for me every time. This is the LA Girl Beautiful Bronze. I do have like four, now four other um, contour creams in my like makeup kit because I've been practicing with them because anything, like here's another pro tip for you makeup artists. If you're gonna put something new into your kit, try it on yourself first. You wanna see like your brushes, how do they feel on your face? Your products, how do they look on your, like you wanna try it yourself before you put it on somebody else. Like you always wanna try it because you are, you are gonna be your best salesperson, you're gonna be your best consumer, you're gonna be able to like really um, judge how your like person that you're working on is gonna feel. If that brush is like poking them, like that's a big, that's a problem, you know? So now we're gonna sculpt out her face. So you can um, zoom back in. I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the face real quick. Okay, so what face shape does she have? Why does she have a heart-shaped face? So she has a prominent chin, right? She has like a little bit more of a sharper like chin here. So I'm chin down slightly for me. Thanks. So see, you can see the heart now more as she looks, right? And so with heart-shaped face, we could probably contour her a little bit. Let me get a thinner brush. We can contour her a little bit right here maybe bring the heart a little bit more out, a little bit right here. We're gonna contour, give her some more cheekbone, right? Never contour lower. It makes people look old or you wanna contour with the height. If you don't know where to contour, it's okay as you're like continuing your journey as an artist to have them make a fish face. Can you make a fish face for me? This is where her jaw is, but am I gonna contour down there? No. Relax. I'm gonna go right up here, right above. It lifts. Mm-hmm, it lifts the face, exactly. She, she has a very nice nose. I would just maybe do a little bit more, but she has a very nice straight nose. So you can, if you want, you can contour. What I would do is you see where her hairline is, and it depends, her hair is not done, but we could like maybe just contour a little bit here, almost where the sun naturally hits on each side, okay? So again, everybody's contour shape is not the same. So what you need to do is you want to study face shapes, right? For Rita, I could see you have a square jawline right away. So when I would do your makeup, I would I would get, go much higher. Uh, I would go much, much higher in the contours, you know? 
So it's just, you have to look at faces, like, and make it a game for yourself so you can, like, know, like, where do I contour this and that, like, okay? All right. Hmm? I forgot all the face shape. Mm-hmm. So now, if somebody had very textured skin, I would start cream contour because it's going to move, it's not going to look soft, it's not going to look neat on them. You want to know, like, again, who you're working with, right? It doesn't, this cream contour is not for everybody. You can use a powder contour. But probably a matte, right? Matte, yeah, yeah everything is matte. Okay. Yeah, contour always matte. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I went a little bit higher. I'm going to come around because... I, usually when I do this, I really like to be in front of the client. You can almost see her invisible contour line right here where her jaw is on this side. I'm going to come slightly higher. And depending when you look at it, you're like, oh, I, I need it to be a little higher. I need to be a little lower. You can change it. Like you can blend it up or down. Okay. People are putting blush on mm -hmm. the cheekbone now. Oh yeah, I might have tried blush. Because that's really rough. Did you put one more on the other? It's very foundation. I like the blush on the other. The rare pink one. Oh, I love it. We do have one. The bright pink one to happy. I have one. Yeah. I like this stuff, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody knows, like, there's a blush that I need to replace. If anybody knows, like, this color, and you like, Mac doesn't make it anymore. What's the name? Um, I'll look it up, I'll tell you after. It just, they don't make it anymore, so I need some, a shade that's similar to that. So if you all, any Oh, I've seen a few. You have? Mm-hmm. Okay, you need to tell me about them. Okay. Did you put one contour lower than the other? I did, because I'm like working sideways. So this one is a little higher, and this one is a little lower. Well then you can show the blending up and down. This one I'm gonna blend down a little bit because it's too high up. This one is where I would want it to be normally. And that's why I came in front of her, because I'm like, this angle, like this side, like you can't tell, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's I see. I like the lower one. I like the yeah. high one. Okay, <laughs> anyway. so let's see. We're gonna play with it and let's see, okay? So again, just same brush, foundation brush. I'm gonna go ahead and blend. And the jaw contour, you're gonna blend it down. You can blend it down into the neckline. Blending it at the jawline and blending it down. If you feel after you do this and you feel like, oh, I see too much foundation or I see too much um, a bronzer or contour cream, what you're going to do is you can go back in with your palette. This is why I never clean my palette, by the way. I know some people are like, clean it, clean it. Don't clean your palette. Go back in, get a little bit of whatever your foundation is right there. Another pro tip. And just blend it. It's not like skin, makeup is not scary. You can fix anything. It wipes off. You can make it look exactly how you want it to look. Straight in. Now look at her jawline. Nice and perfectly blended. Turn to one side. Beautiful. Turn to this side. Even nicer. And look straight. Okay. 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 And you're gonna get so many more chances to correct it however you want. Because when you go back in, your palette, you still have powder, you have black. Like you can, you know, see how it's still a lot to do before, you know, you're done. And if you want like your um, contour to look darker, go in with the contour powder afterward. You can layer product. This is cream, so when cream, you can layer powder on top. Look at the same colors, right? I'll show you that. Okay, so this is the higher contour. I like that. I'm looking in front of her. 
I like the higher contour on her. You see, turn that way. Um, you see here, we have to correct this, right? Because now we want this contour to be higher. So what do we do? Yes, or you could take even your, yeah, this, even the concealer brush, and you can just draw her like this. And then you're taking again your whatever your brush is, and now you're pr pressing it, and you're kind of just erasing your, you know, what you don't want to show. You're pushing up that. Contour that brown hair. Okay, and then you can take this and now bring her. I have a little bit of product on here. You can bring it up. Good? Yeah. Again, same thing. You know where I learned? I learned this one technique from. Do you guys know who Carly Bybell is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She just did so many makeup videos back in the day. Like, oh, she's a lot more vlogging now than makeup videos. But one of the things I learned from her, especially with nose contouring, is you sometimes you feel like nose contouring is too dark, right? So, all right, we're gonna airbrush. And this step, if you are not doing a full glam application, you can skip this step. We're you guys wouldn't really technically need to do as much as what I did if you're just doing like a bridal party. If you are doing airbrush, I always foundation. I do all my cream products first. So foundation, concealer, but so, so color correct, conceal, foundation, contour cream, highlighter cream, all that stuff. And me saying that out loud, I am even going into this airbrush and I skipped one step in that one second. I want to also highlight her a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you what I use to highlight. And if you don't have this, if you have any lighter color foundation, you can use that as well. I mean, concealer, you can use that too. Like literally, you can mix whatever her concealer was and you can add in. Like I have this color Snow, which if you mix this in with any darker color, you can change the consistency because it's this is um, this is like more of a neutral, right, Sharon? Is it neutral, right? So this will go with your light, your cool, like it'll, it'll mix with anything. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of highlighter, and I also like to use highlighter to color correct or co correct the um, contour of the face. If there's any parts of the face that you know maybe I didn't get to correct um, with foundation, so this is um, Creamy Beige from LA Girl, and I like it because it's still more of a warm tone. And I'm just using a little bit. I feel like she doesn't need that much highlighter. I feel like she's pretty highlighted already. Everywhere, just from the, even the concealer I used on her. I'm gonna go ahead and just maybe highlight her a little bit more. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with my sponge. I like to save my sponge and slightly. Just remember what it looked like beforehand, so you can kind of tell. Okay, it looks straight. Good. You see already, she looks a, it's a little bit more highlighted in the area where I just put that uh, highlighter. Did you guys notice? Mm -hmm. Baking is so important for 
like the crease, creasing of the eyes, making sure that it doesn't, it helps with an out creasing. So I always take, and you notice I'm just taking like my brush, like whatever's left, I wanna just make sure I blend, right? Everything looks nice and blended, okay? Okay, so we're gonna airbrush now. You wanna zoom out a little bit, Angelique, so I can show the airbrush? So we're gonna use the Tem2 airbrush. Now we're gonna airbrush her. The reason I like to airbrush is because it just kind of seals any like um, crap gaps in the face. It just really get, leads to like a really smooth looking application. It's very like micro fine the pigment. This is the wrong. So we are going to airbrush her now. And the reason I like to add airbrush to my bridal application is because it really, uh, airbrush number one, um, using the Tem2, Tem2 silicone base airbrush product so it is sweat resistant and water resistant and i like that for brides because if they're crying they're sweating it's you know a lot of times the weddings happen where it's a warmer climate this product has staying power and it almost creates like a seal on the entire application of the face all the work i just did this is going to help to seal it in so and i only do a very little bit of application for airbrush you don't need so much but it also gives you a chance when you airbrush to kind of even out any like areas where maybe you needed a little bit more product or there was like a little bit of gaps of like makeup. It just gives a really, really flawless application. Okay, you can zoom in more. Always remember to make sure that you close your eyes. <laughs> and I like to also tilt the um, gun down a little bit because it brings the product down. And you can see I'm not really going over my highlighted area of where I highlighted already because I don't want to take away all the work I just did, so I kind of avoid that area. But any of the areas like the areas where I did contour, it kind of will help me to smooth it out, like get rid of any like really sharp or harsh lines. Also, I your other hand down because it looks weird uh, because of the photos. Okay, and Straight for me for a second. Do you guys um, can you see the difference with the air, with the airbrush side versus the non airbrush side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you see it in, in softer? Here? Like, what's the biggest difference? Everything um, is more blended. Everything looks more blended, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do this. Okay? Now remember, I only did a couple of drops. You don't need one. You did all the work already. Look straight for me. Take a deep breath and hold it. Okay, three. Chin up. And then you want to get any of the neckline that maybe needs a little bit more blending or any of the Okay? Perfect. And that's that. That's airbrush. Um, chin up for me again. And let's see if you are. This is where sometimes looks straight for me now. Sometimes it's hard because you, you because it's a shadow already, you don't know if it's blended or not, so that's very important there to make sure you're blending. Okay, so now we are gonna move on to baking. And I love the Huda Beauty. This product is like the best product. I love using this um, the Huda Beauty banana for brown, warmer skin tone. So that's what we're gonna be using. This product right here. And I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take a little bit out in here. Usually I don't like to do this, I like to put it in a tissue. Um, is it focusing? Yep. Looks like it's sliding. <laughs> wow. So before you bake underneath the eyes, you wanna make sure that there's no creasing underneath the eyes. So what you can do is you can just go back in and kind of like make sure that you're, I'm gonna take a clean up. sponge. Get rid of the line because you're not baking. You want to bake so that it's like very flawless. And if you don't go back in and fix the creasing underneath the eyes that naturally happens as they're sitting there, then that baking is not going to be effective. Okay? Chin down, eyes up. So smoothing out all the lines and 
then, and I like the yellow, um, the banana, because it brightens underneath the eyes, and especially for women of color that have darker skin tone, like darker, dark circles and stuff, this like, works wonders. I used yesterday Laura Mercier because it's translucent and that's I, I ran out of this one. Sharon brought this one to me and um, I could see the dark circles. And I did everything same except the powder. I'm also gonna bake underneath the cheekbone because I want, at this point, I want to give the opportunity to kind of lift this um, cheekbone a little bit higher and also kind of set like some of my highlight and my contour. Like, so, well, I'm not setting my contour, but I want the contour to pop a little bit more. So that's why I'm creating that like highlight underneath the cheekbone. Okay, and try to do. Same thing, getting rid of the lines. And notice where the powder is going at the corner. We're lifting it up just like we did with the concealer, right? Because it's all about creating that optical illusion. And when you lift the eye, like the eye area, you're already needing to look straight for me. You can already see it's creating that like lifted high cheekbone, high skull on the face. Oh, come on. I'm getting this all over the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chin is part of the sculpting, like so we want it, yeah, we're sculpting okay. it, exactly. So it kind of gives like more of a, if for people who don't have a very sharp chin, it gives more of like a sharper look because it's highlighting the chin. If they have, when is the time when you wouldn't really highlight the chin? I, I mean, I always do a little bit. It depends on how much, if they have a, like, if they have a bigger face, like you could even contour this. If they had a very big chin, you can bring the contour up and you can make almost a heart shape at the bottom also. Okay, all right. I'm thinking when is a time when you wouldn't high up the chin? I always put a little bit. Unless they have a really sharp chin and like it's very pointy, like think of like a witch. <laughs> You're not highlighting a witch's chin. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I always, always um, bring a little bit of shadow underneath the eyes. This is my time to do it because, like, I'm really kind of try. Like, think of the eye as like a, like think of like when you think of a picture, right? Um, if you have a picture without a picture frame, it doesn't stand out. But once you put a frame around the picture, it starts to stand out. And that's kind of the same thing with the eye, right? And so that's why I like to always do something underneath the eye also. Even if it's not an eyeliner like we did on this side, if we're doing a shadow, that's like important because that's gonna really make the eyes pop. When people say, do my makeup, what's the first thing they say? Can you make my eyes pop, right? <laughs> that's how you make their eyes pop. <laughs> what about if, um, cause I'll, I feel like I have a small eye, so if I put, if I'm doing too dark right here, I feel like it closes them up even more. So you could use like a new eyes. liner in your waterline and it'll open up your eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, sure. so I did a Bollywood actress's makeup this week for a photo shoot, which I can't like pro post or promote yet, but she had me do really heavy. It's like, a, this is like difference in like makeup, um, people who are comfortable with makeup too. A lot of times you'll put like a darker color underneath here. You're like, oh, that's too much, right? Um, or sometimes, so you have to like gauge who you're working with, number one. But number two, 
putting more color underneath the eyes actually does open up the eyes. Like if I do this eye right now and I make it a little bit more smoky underneath, her eyes are gonna pop even more. Like under the waterline, mm -hmm. right? The eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you really quickly. Like, so amazing. You go a little bit heavier. Which eye is popping more? Mm hmm so. Right? So. so. Do you ever do your eyes like that? You, you do the hair mm -hmm. underneath, right? Um, okay, so let's do the other side now. Look at that. Just one finish. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, this is not like something you're going to do for everyone. It really, it depends on the look you're doing. It depends on your client. The thing I can't stress to you enough, the thing I can't stress to you enough is you have to know what you're, you have to listen to the client. A lot of times the makeup artists, they're not listening to their clients. They're just doing whatever they want or they're doing an out of the box type of makeup. And then what's happening is that all their, make, all their brides look exactly the same, okay? So remember, it's not like, there's not a rule like that says everybody gets this. This is the step for everybody. This is what everybody needs. It really depends on who you're, like what look you're going for, who you're working with, listening to the client, looking at their face shape, looking at their eye shape. It's all of it. it. That all plays into, you know, who's gonna be happy with your work, okay? What color did you put on the I just did a dark color. I used some of these darker browns down here, okay? And let's say she looks at this and um, something you're like, it's too dark, okay? Let's say she says that, right? How do you correct that? Can you bring the camera down a little bit? Your head's gonna be cut off. Okay, or zoom out a little bit, slightly. How do you correct this? If you want to, if you want to lessen the darkness underneath the eyes, how do you correct it? Put a light, light pink sealer, maybe. Nope. Or lighter, or lighter color, lighter color eyeshadow. You use a lighter color eyeshadow, correct? So you can go back in, and you could do it in the You can go back in, and you can take any of these like lighter browns. Or actually, I'm gonna go into these because this palette, I'm telling you, I use this for everything. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go in with like this lighter brown right here, mm -hmm. okay? And that, if I just go along the edge of her eye, where the darker color ended, look up. And now I start to just lighten it. Immediately it lightens it up. Look straight. And it softens it, right? It looks nicer, right? I like, I always do that anyway, because I don't like anything where it looks very harsh, like you can see it's just black, right? Dimension, think dimension. Um, Okay. So now, um, her eyes, we did one eye, one eye, line, one eye still looks darker than the other, right? You know why? Because this has the eyeliner in the water. This one doesn't have the eyeliner in the water. That's the difference, okay? All right. So now while we're waiting for her face, like the airbrush to dry and her to bake, let me explain why baking is important really quickly. Baking is important. It basically, um, adding baking powder up on the areas where you want it to, like the product to set, like the cream product to set, is really important. What happens is your skin's natural heat basically absorbs whatever powder it needs and it sets the cream product exactly where it is and it, it tends to crease less. It leads to a really nice, flawless looking face, like flawless looking application underneath the eyes, wherever you put it, okay? Um, so that's why I love to bake, especially underneath the eyes. If you're somebody struggling with clients who have creasing underneath the eyes, you want to make sure you bake them a little bit because that will really lead from that, help that concealer to stop creasing, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go back in, we're going to, here, let me give it a little bit more of a thumb. I'm going to take this opportunity and I, there's, I like to work very efficiently and that's why I use the order of application that I do. So while her face is baking, I like to finish the brows, I like to finish the lips, I like to finish everything else that I really doesn't need, you know, like my attention. I, I like to finish everything and then let this set. So I don't, I don't just wait for this to wipe off and then do it like an order. I try to work efficiently. So when you're doing your application, you want to think like, what's the most efficient way to do this application? So I stay on time and everything just, I can like have a good clean application also. Um, does that make sense? Does anybody have tips? Meanwhile, because I know we have some like seasoned artists also 
in the room. Do you guys have any tips for that? You can like, talk while I'm looking for my brush. Mm -hmm. What was the question? <laughs> See, Your order tips. of application. Like, wow. um, yeah, I usually do the eyebrows the last. <laughs> so I don't like to waste time. Yeah. I like to do the eyebrows while she's That's baking. pretty much is the same. Yeah. And I like to do the lips. You know, I like to finish everything that needs to get done while this is like just setting. I do the brows while my lashes are growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So love this palette. This has. This is the um, Browsings Pro Palette from Benefit. I keep a couple of different things in my kit. I keep um, this pro these powder products, I have the cream products, I have the pencils. I have a little bit of everything because not everybody's gonna require the same thing, okay? Depends on the brow. Sometimes you really have to fill in a brow. I had a client um, not too long ago but had no brow in here. Like I had to draw the whole brow. Like all this is gone. So I had to literally fake a brow. And that required multiple products to, in order to keep create that natural look. Okay. And for most people, they like a natural looking brow. I like to start at the end of the brow first because that's what tends to disappear with photography, um, like lots of lighting and all of that. So I like to kind of draw the darker color at the end I'm using this dark brown for her. And she's gonna probably have it all across, like straight across is a darker one. She doesn't need the lighter one. Her hair is all dark. But you notice I'm just using short strokes. And the way you know where to draw your brow is if you're not sure, just take a, a minute to look at them. And the beginning of the brow should be where this, like this part of her nose starts, right? So it would be right here, okay? And then the end of the brow, if you just take like a little angle and you do, that would be the end of her brow, okay? And the arch would be right where her, the center of her eye is, so right? That would be your art, okay? And that's kind of where she has it already. Um, so, I recently just got a brow stamping kit. I like now. Oh, wow. I saw it on TikTok. Cool. It's the first product I bought on TikTok. <laughs> I was like, let me buy it. <laughs> and you literally can just, it has different shapes and you put it against your face. I like the brush because if you're putting product and you want to like make it look more natural, with short strokes you can kind of like move the product a little bit and start to just have it look a little bit more natural all across. And now you see, I don't want to continue with cream product here, so I probably would go and use a little bit of powder just to kind of set it. The powder, it, it works just like how you work a powder on the face, right? You use a cream, if you don't want it to move, you can set it with a powder. The powder will make it look a little bit darker, so I'm gonna go for a little bit of a lighter shade. Do you use a pencil for yourself? Or can I use a cup? Yeah, mm -hmm. color, eyeshadow. Oh, you do? Yeah, eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. The shadows, like the powders, tend to look a little bit more natural yeah, too. The creams tend to look a little bit more um, heavier. And with your brows, you can like do them a little bit more natural if you're not sure, and then you can go heavier if you need to because your client will tell you, well, can I have more brow or whatever? And you're like, sure, of course. What's your, anybody uh, have questions on brows? Like, any struggles you have with brows? I think it's probably not the easiest part of the face for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand, I guess, that part of the face. But the eyeshadow is going to be a little help on that one. <laughs> This one may fill in a little bit more. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So when you almost have to fill in like there's no hair there, you have to be very like just light handed with it. Don't go too heavy. You can always build afterwards. Shape the brows where you need it to be. Clean your scalp while doing anything. Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay. What do you guys think? Looks good? Uh, mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Maybe a little bit darker at that end. And so what I did here was I put the gel, but then I added some powder because that kind of filled it in. Sometimes when you feel like there's gaps, I find like the powder works a little bit better for the gaps in the cream. Oh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. all right. Okay, there she is. Now let's do her lips really quickly. Um, I know she likes color. <laughs> I do. So when you do dark eyes, I tend to, depending on my outfit, uh-huh. I go light or dark. Yeah. So. Um, we're gonna do like uh, a lot of brides these days. They tend to ask for like a light pink or a nude pink lip So I want to show you guys how to do that lip. Okay guys, so I pulled out two different colors um, I almost never use one color right out of the tube. I find that it's very important to mix color um, If they have like more fuller lips, you know a lot of times they don't really like a bright color on their lips If they have smaller lips, sometimes they don't want a dark color on their lips so, you have to also know who you're working again it comes down to knowing who you're working with looking at them and really like figuring out what's going to enhance their most natural their, their features the most natural way possible so for something that she can go either way she has a nice full lip red looks phenomenal on her i've seen it on her multiple times um but a lot of our brides they tend to lean towards more of like more of a natural lip um, especially for their wedding it really depends on the eye if they have a smoky eye or a heavier eye they want a natural lip if they if we're doing a really clean classic look with a very like nude eye then a, a nice red pops so like you want to also weigh in on like where you want the attention to be drawn um, so I picked um, also cool tones like if you're working with warm skin you don't want to pick such cool tones for the lips you have to experiment color you can mix it and just play with it especially when it comes to lip color and if you find something looks too light you can add brown. I um, do keep one of these uh, dark brown Sephora lip colors in my kit for everything. This will fix a lot of the problems when a lipstick is too light. You take a tiny, tiny drop of this and it will warm up the lip immediately. Okay, so I am gonna use um, two mauve colors, two mauve pink colors, and even on camera they're appearing a little bit differently, but I'm gonna show you what they look like on, on Sephora and then we're gonna, if we want it to be a little bit lighter, I also keep a color in my kit called um, Naked. And <laughs> let me see if I can find it here. Um, one second. I thought I had another one. Anyway, I'll come back to it. I also keep a color in my kit called Naked, which will help me to lighten up the lip if I want. This is um, Sharon, you know what color this is. Sharon, you know that? Huh? 86. So at glance, this lip looks dark, right? I'm gonna show you how we're gonna lighten it up and make it even a little bit more nude. Mm-hmm. 
86 to 4. So now I have a lighter color right here that I'm going to mix into the center while it's on our lips. Okay. What happens? The lip already immediately gets lighter, right? What's the other color? So if you are struggling, so it's dark, what's this for dark? Don't worry, I got you. you. We will fix it. Don't you worry about it. That's how you, when you're working with clients and they, all the time they panic. Yeah. Bridesmaid, mother of the bride, mother of the groom, you know, they're, they, it's the end of the world for them. But it's not what you say, it's how you say it, okay? So if you say, you know what, you think it's too dark, don't worry. I know exactly what we're going to do to fix it. Just say it like that. I know exactly what we're going to do to fix it. They're going to be like reassured immediately. Oh, okay. You know what you're doing. It's, it'll be fine. You know? If you say, oh, I think it looks really good. I think you should leave it. You're not listening to them. Please listen to them. Like, honestly, like, if you're, even if you're watching this, a lot of you guys, you, you may be a seasoned pro artist, but listen to your client. If you're not listening to your client, you're not going to get repeat clients. People are not going to want to work with you. Right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's listening and also making them feel heard, right? Because sometimes you can be like, okay, okay. But like making them feel heard, reassuring them a little bit. That's half of it. Half of this business or half of this work is psychology. The other half is your application. This is a great color. It is, right? It looks so good on you. I think I'm gonna leave. I don't think I'm, we're gonna even make it a little lighter. I actually really like the way this is looking. What do you guys think? Yeah. Right? Okay. I think we're gonna leave it. Um, the only thing I am going to do is blend it a little bit more. I was going to say, yeah. did you get all the way to the corners? Would you do that or would you leave it a little darker on the ends? Like on no, the corners? really the darker on the ends. Also, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what's that color they did from where? What brand? Kind of oh. They don't make that anymore. You get it, Marshall. That's it. That's it. Did you say at Marshall's? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so face, her, she's like effectively baked, and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this powder off, and we're gonna have some fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this powder off, and what I'm gonna do is, well, while we're gonna take this powder off, and I'm gonna use two powders on her. I love the MAC powders, the Studio Fix powders. I have them depotted, but this is like, these are the colors we're going to use on her to set her, okay? This is NC25, and this is NC42, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. So after this, you should not see any creasing on her piece. powder. We're going on top of it. So remember, we're layering product, but this makeup she could sleep in it. It's going to look the same. Literally. 14 hour application. Look at sleep. You need to sleep in it. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I may not wash my face tonight. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, you have great skin, so please wash your face. <laughs> right? I'm joking. <laughs> so now look, I just did the powder on this side. A little bit more flawless. Yeah. Right? right That's why I use this product. Yeah. Okay? You highlight it. 
right? Right, it's highlighting. We're going back and we're gonna highlight and contour where we need to highlight and contour. Look at this. And even if you're doing a bridesmaid, you can do this and solve your problems. It's like if they want cream this, cream that, just use your products. You use your powders, I should say. It's gonna like automatically, even if they're not getting this full bridal application, if you use these foundation powders, it's really gonna make a huge, huge difference. Now, does not say she looks shiny or anything, but it, she looks even more like flawless. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And don't be afraid of powder. Powder, I know people are like, oh, it's too drying. Like, if you're mature, if you have mature skin, this is like for longevity, and she can handle this. Her face can do this powder and all of this stuff. Sometimes people cannot. Their skin is not going to like look good with it. If you have a very fair person and they have like more fine lines, they have very thin skin, Safna has thicker skin. Like she can handle makeup, her skin can handle makeup. That's the other thing. Like sometimes people have very fair, light, thin skin or older, thin skin, like, they can't handle that much makeup. You can't do all of this. So you're going to, you're going to tweak it. Heavy moisturizer, a thinner foundation, you're going to highlight that if you want it, you know, you can do the other stuff, but so just that, keeping that all in mind, okay? Um, now here's our other product. And I feel like I want to use a bigger, like a looser brush for this. So here's the, the difference. There's a dense brush and this one is a little bit like more just looser, right? And so for the dense brush, I want to like do it around the chin area because that's where the most of the discoloration usually is. So. And I want to even this out too because I see like too much light. I want to blend it now. And just um, get a little bit closer there. Perfect. Looking good. Perfect. Straight. Awesome. Now I'm just going to go in and I just need a real, literally just a dusting of this product because this will be a lighter application. If I use the heavier brush, it's going to be a harder, like a more. Um, more, more denser application. It's going to be more packed on it, right? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to contour her. We're going to use these contour powders now. And we're gonna go in. Can you just use that? Benefit. Same brush. Mm -hmm. brush. These are the benefit. And I always I mix. If I feel like I don't want too much, I want to start with lighter. I can mix. I can mix the lighter and the darker. And those colors are kind of deceiving because, like, even if it looks light, it still can go mm -hmm. dark. Yep. So immediately, like you can see, the shadow is more on this side because I just contoured it with the contour powder. So that's why it's important to do it. And this is like a step if you're going to do a more of a full blend application. And you have a looser brush. You guys doing brides. Hmm? You have a looser brush. I use the same brush on packing it in, like where I want it. And I could use a very light handed approach to do lighting. Like if I take the same brush and now I'm going to very lightly contour her with the contour powder. And always start at the back of the cheek bone because if you put more product, it's okay because it's back there versus in the front. Do we see the difference on one side of the face? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Guys, we're probably not going to do the hair class because this is taking a lot longer than I anticipated, so we're going to have to reschedule that. So remember you had two brushes? Mm hmm There was a dense one and a looser one? Yeah. Was the one that you were just using that was the dense one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like that one. Okay. Okay. Yep. Very nice. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people like to do like this kind of like shimmery highlight. Mm -hmm. 
I'm so sorry. That's okay. This is all these powders. You can make this face look dewy with your setting sprays. But it's gonna stay in place. It's gonna last. Because my face doesn't have much powder on it. This won't. Yeah, it's very dewy because I didn't put a lot of powder. But I'm doing makeup that's gonna last. This client, they're gonna go to dance in Burra and they're gonna come back and be like, my makeup didn't last and my makeup artist sucks because it sweat it off. You don't want that. So don't worry about this and that. Like, you gotta do makeup that lasts. You know? You can give them dewy and all that. You can bring it all back with your setting sprays and highlighters. That solves the problem. So, blush. I'm gonna show you a blush technique that I absolutely love. Um, that's why I'm looking for like a lighter blush like this. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I like to mix blushes. Um, don't be afraid, just because you have one color in your kit doesn't mean you have to use that one color. You can mix your blushes, okay? And so I'm gonna start, I like an angled uh, blush brush to do this. And I'm gonna start from the back of the cheek and I'm gonna bring the color to the front. Is that ballet? I have no idea. I just look at the colors and I see like what the tones are that are gonna look good on her skin. Um, and I can, it's all MAC blushes. This whole yeah, yeah, palette no, I think they is have MAC. The one that you're running out of, I'm saying. Oh, I, I think, think that's so. ballet. No, no okay. it's not. It's dressed, well dressed. Well dressed. They don't make it anymore? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And same thing, so same, same technique here. <laughs> a lot of our Indian clients look straight for me. They like blush. They like a lot of blush. Mm -hmm. Right? Would you say? I like blush. See? <laughs> blush me up. Yes. Right? It helps with the contour. Yes. Uh huh. That's why they like the blush. But she is very contoured, so she doesn't need so much. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. So now, what I love this lighter color for, it just makes the apples of the cheeks pop. And so, yeah. Mm hmm. So smell for me. Yeah. That was my nice. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Look at the blush. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's Look at the difference. Yes. Look at that. Boom. Do you do you ever use dandelion light benefit? It's like no. that light pink. Mm -hmm. That one is really nice on darker skin. So it's just pink. on the apples. Look how nice. Does that have right? shimmer in the blush or is it? I blush? almost think it just because of the color here. I'll let you see it. Yeah. You can see. But it looks so nice. It looks yeah. Like it's yeah. Like it's really nice. Yeah. And because everything is so done, like you can use your you can touch the face if you need to to like adjust things, right? I can look at her and now I'm gonna just blend if I feel like I need to blend a little bit more. This one's pink. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit of. Okay, last thing we're gonna do is some lashes. Let me get some lashes for her. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. She actually has to go on a date. Yes, oh, there's two more hard things. Actually, before we do lashes, before we do lashes, we're gonna do some, we're gonna, we gotta give her some highlighter. I forgot about that, okay? This is, I mean, I have um, Champagne Pop and Prosecco Pop, and like a couple other highlighters, but I love these. I don't think they make these anymore. These are like the new ones. This is like, they don't have Champagne Pop, right? They only Champagne Pop. They do? Oh, I love this highlighter. They are so good. Yeah, they do. This is the Champagne Pop. And, oh God, a little bit goes a long way. You also don't want to do overdo the highlighter because you don't want them look, looking greasy. Look straight for me. I had a that, that actress that I did. She had me put blush on her nose. It's a trend. It's a trend. It's a trend. Blush. Blush, blush or highlighter? No, blush on the nose. Like I did. I did it all the time. It should go. Oh, oh yes. I think huh? it's a I heard it was a trick you put on your nose and your forehead, like a little bit, yeah. and it's supposed to, I forgot what the thing was, but. I know, like, we have her here. It's something that yeah. yeah. under my under eye. Under the eye, yeah. Huh? I, I, I haven't, I haven't nailed it under the eye yet. Oh, I love that. That's like very, 
Okay. So now, highlighter is done. Everything is super happy. Looking good, girl. What are we doing here? We're going to put some lashes on you. Good to go. Now, I have seen multiple times, I've seen lashes lifting on people. And I don't want to see that. And the reason that happens is because you're not letting the glue dry. If you're eyeliner is proper, it doesn't matter. Like the black well, glue. That's the thing. I don't the only time eyeliner. I would say use a black glue if you're not doing an eyeliner. That's why I use it. Yeah, I but then there's a shine. So do you want your eyeliner to look shiny? But you also have like if you don't use an eyeliner and use black glue, don't you have like a gap? Like, yes, yeah. I, I don't like it. I don't like it because I feel like mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Does anybody here else work with black glue? It just she doesn't works work for, with black me. glue. She does it only eyeliner, personal. So. Oh yeah, or personal, yes. Yeah. yeah, if you're using it for eyelashes for yourself. No, if I was using eyes for someone else, it would be that. It would be the clear. Because if you make a mistake, then it's hard to fix Absolutely. the mistake. Okay, so your eyelashes, here's another tip for your eyelashes. Is that focusing? You gotta hold oh, it. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so for your eyelashes, you have to let them dry for like 60, mm -hmm. let, let them dry a little bit. Um, I also keep like a nice little neat dryer in my kit. Ooh. Here it is, right here. You can use it to dry your eyelashes. You know what else you could do is like... Is a different one? Neighbor? No, it's not. No, it's it's my, it's the, that is the neighbor. <laughs> So while the glass glue is drying, I take that time to like put mascara on the lashes. Um, Sharon, that's when you got, you said you do your brows, right? So utilize your time. That's how you stay in time. You utilize your time. Um, do you guys have questions? Anybody have questions in the meantime? Obviously. Mm -hmm. I don't even curl the lashes. Oh, really? No. Like, what kind of gets in the like, like, mm -hmm. You get really straight lashes that go mm -hmm. down. I don't do it before. I do. And then you put lashes on. You can see like, no different. Different. Lashes, so, like, even after you put the lashes down. Is it really super straight? I do have a lash curler and you can curl them. Or you can do it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, Marnie, what did I say? There's no rules. You gotta do what works for that client. Right? When the lashes are like too straight, I do mascara before and after. Because you already have product in there, so it's like you mascara. I mean, with the lashes on. When the lashes on, you curl first and then put the lashes on. I almost never curl. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. I would love to never curl. I almost <laughs> never. <laughs> never, never because you never. can curl with this. Mm -hmm. Why are you yes. gonna do it with anything else? You can use this to curl. Yes. Yes. I feel like you're saying you do the mascara before. It will hold once you do you the lash on top and then you add mascara again. Then right. they really mm -hmm. gonna stick because the lashes yeah. already have product. Right. So, so if you see yeah. it and you're like, okay, like gauge what's going on with your like client. You gotta like work the mascara too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Good, um, let me bring that point out. So that some of these things are such habit. You wanna, when this lash is drying, you wanna kinda like move the lash and bend it a little bit so it's like fitting the eye. It will kinda, it will, it will sit better if you do that.
And then one to think six. A lot of artists, I don't know why. Like, I'm like a, I like everything finished. And so you have to go over the limit after you do this. Some people are lazy, I don't know what it is. Like I have to continually correct like people on that, but you cannot just beat this flash in the line just like that. Sarah, you have some BTS so if you mm -hmm. took some? I guess so. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do more. Yeah, yeah, because we're almost done. Look at the difference, right? Lot. Lash so versus no lash. And now if you wanted to, if, if the lash was bothering her or it felt too heavy, you could take this and you could take you can blend this together if you want. You can. There's no rule, right? Like you do what works for that. Not always do I even put the mascara on her. That fits much better. Yeah? See, it feels much better for her. Yeah. So But we can you pretend you're applying this. So sometimes you know, like, you don't have to. It's not always, right? Like that looks so nice. Like yesterday, um, guys, I'm recording, so let's just try to, yeah. Um, so yesterday I did a client, and I didn't curl her eyelash. Her eyelashes were really curly. I didn't put mascara. I didn't want that to get in the way, because sometimes it gets in the way. Hard as I did it, because it, I could do a little bit, right? So it's not, it's not one way always. So. Now before I actually push them in open for me and look straight, I want to make sure they're sitting where they where they where I want them to sit, and then I if not I can adjust them. That is so high. Text him. Who could show that? I don't know. <laughs> and here's another tip. Um, you always want to push, once they're dry, push them up a little bit. You want to make sure you push them up a little bit because that settles them in and it also makes them look more natural. And they're, they're not supposed to be looking damp. Like, lashes should be lifted up. So I'm going to do the same thing here because it does. Look at me. It helps. Like, the clients immediately, once you blend the lashes together, kind of pushes them up also. Feels good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Beautiful. So now I'm just gonna go back in really quickly. Not much. It's not gonna take you much time at all. I'm gonna use my little bit of dark brown. Everything is already pretty black on the. You know, it's already a black eyeliner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over it with. takes over half of your eyeliner also. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm just like wiping away any, like if anything is going to fall out or anything like that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flat eyeshadow brush that's right here. And hold it. Yeah. No. That's not even going to hold. There, there you go. go. Right there. Okay. I'm going to take a dark shadow and I literally want to take the darkest one I own. I need to get another black eyeshadow, but it's in this sultry palette. It's like this noir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm gonna just go over like this and now. on one part of the face and it's not doing what you want it to do, move on and come back. Don't stay stuck there. It's going to waste a lot of time for you. Open. All right. Now, who, on that, who wants that dewiness? Everything feels okay? Lashes feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to use the Morphe. I use this a lot. I use the um, Charlotte Tilbury and then I use the um, Urban Decay 24-7 for really oily skin. But this will, this is an awesome product. And I'm just gonna spray it all across the face. It smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> and look how much I put on, right? I gave her a good amount. And then all oh, this right. And let her dry her face. Mm -hmm. it smells really good. Mm -hmm. What yeah. does it cost? Um, so luminous, dewy. You're gonna have to order it online because Morphe doesn't have a store anymore. Unfortunately. Oh, whole time. Oh, Ulta has it? Because mm -hmm. I use Max. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's good. Glow Get It. It's called Glow, glow Get It. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Alright. Oh, I got it wasn't a while ago. It was recently. Yeah. Okay. She's done. for watching. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of a soft glam bridal look on Sapna. What do you think of your makeup? I love it. And you it ready feels to, very light. Yeah. And you're ready to, are you ready to walk down the aisle and I am. renew your vows? <laughs> I'm going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, All right. if you're not already, remember to like, comment, and subscribe and share your questions and what you'd like to learn next. Thanks, Cinderella's. Bye.